Hello. Welcome to this third lecture on the philosophy of nonviolence. I'm Dale Snowart, professor of peace studies and education at the University of Toledo. Today's lecture will focus on moral duty, the moral duty to resist injustice, which is uh, fundamental to the philosophy of nonviolence. As we've discussed in previous lectures, there's five elements of the philosophy of nonviolence. And uh, today, today, in this third lecture, we're discussing uh, exploring the moral duty to resist injustice. The moral duty to resist injustice is based upon a, the following argument in the philosophy of nonviolence. One, uh, which we have already discussed, given that dignity and self-respect are the most basic values or goods, their fundamental values, everyone, every person has the high, has a highest order interest in their protection and realization. In other words, one has a basic right to them, a justified claim moral claim to, to the protection and real, realization of one's own dignity and self-respect. This is a fundamental good, and this is what we are due as a matter of justice. Secondly, all rights entail correlative duties. Duties are the flip side of rights. If one has a right, then that invokes a duty, an obligation on others and oneself uh, to protect and realize that right. Three, therefore, the basic duty to dignity and self-respect, including, and that right would include a social structure and a system of other rights that protects and supports the realization of dignity and self-respect. Uh, that basic right entails a general duty or invokes a general duty to ensure the right to dignity of every person as an urgent matter of justice. It's a duty that we owe others and therefore the right to dignity is what we are due and what we owe others as a matter of justice is uh, to protect uh, and, re and help them realize, to support the realization of their dignity and self-respect. Fourth, if we are due dignity and if we have a duty to ensure the basic right of dignity for all, then what follows, logically, is also a basic duty to resist and reform social and political institutions, laws, policies, customs, and practices that threaten or violate the rights of all persons. The duty to resist injustice follows from the basic right to dignity and the correlative duty to ensure that right for all. There is, uh, uh, therefore, a basic duty to resist injustice and not to passively submit to it. This, is, this duty and argument is very basic and very fundamental, really at the core of the philosophy of nonviolence. This is expressed by John Rawls. For example, in his uh, very important book, A Theory of Justice, at the beginning of that book he writes, Justice is the first virtue of social institutions, as truth is of systems of thought. A theory, however elegant and economical, must be rejected or revised if it is untrue. Likewise, laws and institutions, no matter how efficient and well-arranged, 
must be reformed or abolished if they are unjust. Uh, Rawls here is invoking a duty to reform or abolish unjust social institutions. Martin Luther King expressed the same uh, position in the following quote, quote, the oppressed, that is those who suffer from injustice, must organize a revolution, not against the lives of the persons who are oppressing them or benefiting from their oppression, but against unjust social and political structures, end quote. The must, in both of these quotations, the must to revolt or transform, reform, etc., that is to resist injustice, is implied, uh, an implied duty. The word must, in other words, implies the duty to resist injustice. So we could argue that the, based upon this uh, orientation or perspective, the duty to resist injustice is mandated by the imperative of recovery of dignity, respect, and agency. Action, re the resistance to injustice is the means of achieving agency, freedom, and self-respect. And therefore to resist Injustice is to uh, be accountable in a moral sense to the good of self-respect, to, to be accountable to the moral demands of dignity and personality by securing the moral good of self-respect. Accountability in this sense speaks to our fundamental duty. It implies a duty. We are held accountable to the moral good of self-respect by exercising, acknowledging, affirming, and acting on our duty to resist injustice. Gandhi uh, also put forth an argument for the duty to resist he argued that acquiescence, sorry, acquiescence to injustice violates one's uh, relation to oneself. That it is, that is, it contradicts one's basic imperative for self-realization. Moreover, every act of injury to a living creature, an endorsement of such an act by refraining from effort whenever possible to prevent it, is also a violation of justice. So not only is an act of injury or harm to some other person or thing not only is a direct injury or harm to some other being a violation of justice and morality, but also refraining from uh, preventing it, if, one, if possible, refraining from resisting uh, the perpetration of that harm is also a violation of justice. It is violent in other words, to abstain from efforts to prevent harm, to prevent suppression, manipulation, exploitation, etc. And unjust uh, societies, Gandhi argued, are structurally violent in this sense, that they are oppressive and dominating. Their structures are. And you are violent if you do not prevent violence uh, which is it which it is possible for you to prevent. Therefore, one has a duty to resist injustice. A second uh, kind of argument for the duty to resist injustice is based upon mutuality and 
reciprocity, that is our fundamental interconnectedness. Martin Luther King stated in his letter from a Birmingham jail, quote, moreover, I am cognizant of the interrelatedness of all communities and states. I cannot sit idly by in Atlanta and not be concerned about what happens in Birmingham. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. End quote. Uh, Gandhi uh, also had a similar perspective. Quote, I believe in the essential unity of man and for ma that matter of all that lives. End quote. Nonviolence follows from the unity and interdependence of humanity and life. Because of this interdependence, this mutuality, uh, violence damages uh, all forms of life, both either directly or indirectly, and it damages one's the perpetuation, per, per, perpetuation of violence, acting out of violence also harms oneself. From this perspective, to harm the other is to harm oneself. Therefore, uh, nonviolence rests upon an awareness of our fundamental interconnection and mutuality, reciprocity with others. Therefore, we can conclude, based upon this mutuality, that we have a moral duty to not only do no harm, but to prevent and resist violence in all its forms. The duty of resistance to injustice rests as well on a faith in the possibility of justice, that uh, justice is possible, that a just society is fundamentally possible, although difficult to achieve perhaps Although it's a long struggle, uh, we have to believe King, Parker, Kant, Rawls, etc. argue. We have to believe in the possibility. And this is uh, expressed in Martin Luther King's famous statement, the arc, quote, the arc of the universe, moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice, end quote. Uh, King was uh, influenced by a statement from Reverend Theor Theodore Parker, a 19th century ab abolitionist, who wrote, I do, not un quote, I do not pretend to understand the moral universe. The arc is a long one. My eye reaches but little ways. I cannot cal calculate the curve and complete the figure by the experience of sight. I can divine it by conscience, and from what I see, I am sure it bends towards justice." End quote. In the 18th century, Immanuel Kant, who we have met before, writes, if justice perishes, then it is no longer worthwhile for men to live upon the earth. End quote. And Rawls, following Kant, writes in his book, The Law of Peoples, Quote, if a reasonably just society of peoples whose members subordinate their power to reasonable aims is not possible, and human beings are largely amoral, if not incurably cynical and self-centered, one might ask with Kant whether it is worthwhile for human beings to live on the earth. These quotations um, express I believe, a basic faith in the possibility of justice, which provides the ground for affirming and exercising one's duty to resist injustice. In summary, the duty to resist injustice follows from the duty of respect for persons, which is grounded in the right 
to the basic moral good of dignity. Justice demands that all persons are due respect, and thus we owe others action to protect their due dignity whenever it is threatened or violent. This duty is foundational to the philosophy of nonviolence, and as we'll see, the uh, strategy and practice of nonviolent action. Thank you very much.